Welcome to the Best Damn Podcast. I am your host, John Keen. As always, I would like to thank you guys for joining me. As such, you please add, follow, and subscribe. And remember, check us out, www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash best damn podcast if you're watching here on youtube make sure you like share comment subscribe click the bell and support the channel at www.paypal.me forward slash best damn podcast i want to go ahead and get straight to it i'm really excited uh, i got my friend and uh my brother in christ uh the man the myth the legend Derek bros the global witness what's up Derek? what's up man well, I don't know whether I'm a myth. Or I don't know whether I'm a legend, but I'm a man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so excited to have you, man. Um, uh, I Here's one of the things I really love to do. Every time I have Gary Wayne on, for sake of balance, because I don't consider myself Gnostic. I don't consider myself Christian. I'm kind of in between. So I love to bring on you right after this. That way I can give a different take because you've always got a very great understanding of the truth and how all of this works. And I think it's, we can get into, you know, I don't want to like bash one side or the other, but I, there's a way different way of looking at things. And I think that you bring a very unique and uh, awesome way of looking at it. So I'm, I'm really excited to have you, man. You're, you're just a great dude. So thanks brother. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've listened to Gary Wayne and uh, I watched your show with Gary and you know, I, 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 I can always just simply say that um, somebody can have a portion of the truth, but we fight tooth and nail to hang on to a previous understanding, so much so that we'll distort things in our own mind and our own understanding. And that's precisely what the church has done, which is convincing people. You and I were talking before we came on the air about, you know, uh, because Malia and I were talking, and it becomes so weird for us to, to try to figure out how can people not see the truth of Christ's words? How are they completely ignoring what he says in order to come up with their idea of what Christianity is? And how can these detractors and people and, and that have a different point of view? And that's why I said, you know, I, I don't think Gary's a bad guy at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. I only think that people become bad when they attack you, John, or attack me, because then you are completely out of the balance of understanding of who Christ was in the first place. And they'll justify it by saying, oh, and they go back to these Old Testament scriptures that talk about this God of wrath and and how, you know, hold them accountable. And it's like, where, 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 where was Christ doing this? Yes, he did uh, braid cords of whips and go through and and free all of the animals out of the temple right it didn't mm -hmm. say that he beat up anybody and did he go out and intentionally go and attack a pharisee no he waited for a pharisee to say something to him and question his thought and then he would clarify his thought uh, with what um their own law right and remember <laughs> and remember that when he would quote it to them he would say, does your law not say, right? Yes. Like, yes. That's your law, brother. It ain't mine. Right? Mm -hmm. So he was, that's why he could tear down the law, but he wasn't tearing it down. Just like he said, I did not come to tear down the law. I came to fulfill it and the prophets, right? But here's the amazing part. The word that was taken from that is um, that you find in the other gospels is that he said, I did not come to tear down the law, but I came to translate and fulfill. He was mm -hmm. retranslating it for you so you could finally understand it because it had become distorted by the needs and the wants of man, which is constantly pointed to from the Pharisees where they were more concerned about their place and their nation amongst the Romans. They were not concerned about things of God. And that's why he would say, your mind is not on the things of God. Your mind are things of man. For you Absolutely. speak with your lips, right? But your heart is far from me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, um, you know, I think that Christianity as a whole has gotten really far away from the truth. If you uh, just look at at the entire setup that they got going on it's uh it's completely saturn worship is what it is um in a oh. nutshell and it's been taken in a way to where it's externalized completely there's there's no um going within there's no um 
personal accountability for really anything. And that's what I think the whole, uh, you know, we get where we push our sins off on, on other things, on other people. Um, this is where we, you know, we, we get a, a lot of our self-righteousness in this condemnation and this attitude that we have towards other believers, towards other people. And I think the, the, the way that you have presented uh, a lot of these scriptures, at least for me, you know, I can speak for me, that it has clarified a lot of things and opened up a whole new level of understanding, you know, for me personally. So I think you uh, do an amazing job um, at what you do. So, so um, I, now I heard you on Leak Project last night and you were speaking about Yahweh being the beast. Now, can you explain this to the listeners of how that's so? And is this Yada Bayoff, Yahweh, the same thing? <laughs> yeah, well, it, it depends on if you're, that's who they would refer to as Yalda Bayoff, right? So in the Gnostic okay. text, they would refer to Yahweh as Yalda Bayoff. Um, But if you read the scriptures, the prophets are speaking about who Yahweh is, right? They say that Yahweh speaks of a bear, again, these imageries, right? Speaks of a bear, mm -hmm speaks of the face of an eagle. So it gives you the, the, uh, the animal attributes so, they, so you can identify it later. Then in Revelation, it says the beast comes and gives you the exact description. So it tells literally the exact description. The amazing part is, is um, um, I, uh, you know, I don't like promoting channels and stuff, you know, just to, in telling people, but the, uh, Nani, uh, Nine Nania, if you've ever watched her channel, she has a video right now that takes the scripture and breaks it down in great detail as to who the beast is and that the beast is Yahweh. You cannot deny it. So anybody that says, no, no, Yahweh is God. Yahweh is the father. No. And here's the other thing, John. Here's where I have a difficult time um, understanding how people can't hear and see these things. Christ said, for the father is spirit. And he is looking mm -hmm. for those that worship him in spirit and in what? In truth. So mm -hmm. in truth, meaning understanding who he is, understanding that the enemy calls himself God and has done a really good job convincing everybody that he is God, which is why people are so steadfast and saying Yahweh is God. So Yahweh, the tetragrammaton that is that, is a mathematical structure. Okay, I can tell you right now, the father is, isn't relegated to a math structure. The enemy mm -hmm. would be, and his construct of this simulation that he's created and the hive mind that he has utilized for his own good, that is the math structure of Yahweh. So for them, as long as they're still in that mathematical structure and they are, st and they think, oh, I'm no, no longer in the matrix, you are the matrix, people. You <laughs> are the matrix. If you are continuing to perpetrate this and understand this, when it shows it right in front of your face with your own scriptures, when you understand that for plausible, plausible deniability purposes, that the enemy has purposely told you the truth and he has purposely told you his lies and the truth and the lie being in the same line has nothing to do with the words being different. It's how you've been taught and how you've been forced to hear them. And that's why they will not hear the things that speak the truth. And they, they won't. They're fully into Yahweh. And the crazier part about that is how, in, how, how on earth, John, do you relegate the father, the creator of all things to some caricature that is going to show up and has a name? The reason why scripture says the name of God is ineffable is because it's ineffable. Hold on. Malia is calling me. I want to make sure she's okay. okay. Are you Okay. Now, um, I just, I wanted to talk for a second, give him a moment, that way he can- uh, Sorry, I just wanted to make sure you were okay, because I'm on John's show with him. That's okay. This, uh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. I just wanted to, because I knew she knew that I was doing the show, so if she was calling me, then I wanted to make sure it wasn't an emergency. Absolutely, man, that's uh, very important. You gotta take care of your girl, bro, no <laughs> doubt. Now, so, okay, we, we look at the Gnostic text, right? Uh, and we have this description of a character named Yalda Bayoff, and he's uh, the lion-headed, you know, serpent. He's uh, also Samael, the god of the blind, um, which I find, you know, that, that name alone. Um, now, you talk a lot about how this world is set up and it's structured 
just like with the Sumerian tablets, right? Uh, Inky and Mill, there's the two God system. So um, I like when Gary Wayne was on the other day, he was speaking about how the Bible has a lot of places where Yahweh would be in one place. Well, and then in other places where they would put my Lord, it would be talking about Adonai. Is this the same two characters just played out over again, Inky and Enlil? Uh, uh, it's two characters. And this is where the dueling gods come from. This is why it's difficult. That This is why you see within scripture, the even though I say, oh, it's the bad God talking. And they go, but, but, there's also this good side, which is always going to be opposition. Remember that they're always in opposition to each other. And one mm -hmm. is always ruling, but not the same one is the ruler of the world. So if you go by the ancient Sumerian text, you'll understand that these both of these characters, so Yahweh, Jehovah, would be Enlil, and Aronai mm -hmm. would be Enki. Okay, so at different times. So Aronai seems more loving because he cares for his creation, because we're it, not our spirit, not what comes from the father, but this physical body and his manipulation of the DNA is his. Now, here's where this gets complicated for people where they can't quite understand that Enlil at the time of that creation was Lord of command. Okay. So it's like, John, if you worked for me, right. And I said, mm -hmm. Hey, um, uh, you are my administrative assistant. Okay. okay. And I said, I need you to build me a PowerPoint for this presentation. And you built the PowerPoint and I used it in my presentation. I would say my PowerPoint is this because it's mine. I hired you yeah. to do it. So it's still mine, but you were the creator of it. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, Inky was the creator, but he was granted the authority by the Lord of command Enlil, who actually didn't want to do it who felt it was a violation. So in each one of them, you find right and wrong. So Enlil was correct that it was a violation to be able to take these spirits, breathe into life into these creatures that were manipulated. And that's why he said, it has grieved me in my heart that I have created man. Even though he didn't create him, Enki did, but he gave the authority. So it grieves me in my heart that I have created man because all they think about every day is evil. Because in the Sumerian text, he was sick and tired of listening to them have sex. Right? Yeah. He was like, <laughs> yeah. oh, thank you. So here's the crazy part about it. Enki, being the enemy of his brother, created man so that they were also connected with the gods, them. So Enlil, being a superior being and connected through the DNA of these gods, could actually hear the thoughts of man. So he was in touch with them because they were in control of them. They were playing a part of the hive mind, the matrix, right? So here's the mm -hmm. whole point is that he was like, it grieves me in my heart and I will blot them out, right? And I will wipe them off the face of the earth. And then it's Inky that says, but I found favor in Noah or Zia Sudra, my son, because I've created him. He's my kid. <coughs> and if you actually know the Sumerian text, he literally was his son. So Noah or Zia Sudra was, um, was half divine. He was half Anunnaki, right? Oh. So he was superior to everybody else. He had a higher level of consciousness. He had a higher intellect. That's why when you read in scriptures that he was unique and, and even Noah's father, even in the Bible says doubts that this is my son. This can't be my son and accuses his wife of having sex with who the angels because she had <laughs> right. So, <laughs> yeah, I mean, all of this stuff comes clear and the old Testament, the entire Torah is a, uh, is a plagiarized version of the Sumerian text. No question about it. However, within it, as I was talking to Rex last night, is embedded a different code of things because each construction of this simulation has a different set of rules. It's like me writing a writing an updated program, right? So the Sumerian text having these truths within it reveal a structure. There is nothing new under the sun. Everything happens again, right? And so the Torah itself became just um, just the Bible 
right? It yeah. was just the Samiri 2.0. It was an upgraded version of the way that you tell people their history and the way that you indoctrinate them to keep them in order, to keep them in line, doing what you want them to do. Right. And this is what's so crazy. That's what I was saying to Rex. And he was laughing. He was like, dude, that's it's amazing to think about that. I said, everybody says that we've been given free will. God gave us free will. Really? Why did God then tell you to follow his will and his will alone? How do you jibe with the free will thing? Okay. It doesn't yeah. work. As long as you have these contradictions, you have to go, what's up? And who are these gods? And see the, the, typical Christian of today, or even a Gary Wayne, they will fight tooth and nail because they, they are terrified, John. And this is what it comes down to. They are terrified of abandoning God, thinking that it will be the unforgivable sin, right? And the reality yeah. is, if you want to know the Father, you must die to everything you ever thought. That's why it says, no one can see the Father and live. Do you know what that means? No one can see the father and stay who he is because once you've seen him and you know him, you know that person's face when they have. It's like when I met Malia, she goes, you've seen the father exactly as I've seen him because nothing that I ever thought previous, she had gone to church her entire life. Her family is brothers and pastors and she's been in church and she was like, nope, I saw the father and it killed me. Yeah. Right, And yeah. seeing the father face to face, you recognize that you are him and he is you. That's why he says, I never knew you if you've never seen him. You Absolutely. go, but didn't I cast out demons in your name? Didn't I do all these things in your name? I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Oh, wow. Who was he talking to? You workers of iniquity. And they said, didn't I cast out demons in your name? Who was he talking to? Um, I don't know. How about the pastors? How about the yeah. teachers that are teaching and casting out demons in Jesus name? Because they're casting out demons in Jesus name. Here's the crazy part. They are acting like they are casting out the demons. In other words, the workers of iniquity, the iniquity becomes just this that they think they're casting out the demons. No, see, even in your own words, you've incriminated yourself and testified against yourself because you didn't cast out anything. Neither did Jesus. In fact, he tells you by your faith, you're healed. You did it according to your faith. Let it be done. Do you believe that I can do this? No. Do you believe you No. you can do this? He says with an exclamation point. Everything he did was about who the father that resides in you, not in him, yeah. not in his power. And so the workers of iniquity are people that make Jesus over here and that he's somebody over here. And he becomes the purveyor of the works of Jesus who's over here. I'm casting yeah. out demons in that guy's name. No, you cast out demons in Christ and the demons that you need to cast out are in you. And if my words cast out demons in you, it's because my words hit inside of you as truth and you cast out your own demons. Full stop. And all That's of cool. Christ's word, every single bit of his words tell you this ad nauseum and they still do not hear for they will have eyes to see and they will not perceive for indeed they will hear and they will not understand. Absolutely. And he does say um, that I can do nothing apart from the father who sent me, you know, multiple times. That's a statement that he makes. And my understanding of Jesus is the whole purpose of him coming and, you know, him doing what what he did uh, was to allow us that connection to the father because it wasn't there before. Everybody was in the false gods, the false idols it was an injection of of light and truth into this world that just wasn't there, you know, up until that moment. Now, um, I do want to ask you about this. Now, uh, this is this is also kind of stemming from the Gary Wayne thing, and then we'll move to something different. Now, uh, his belief, and he's brought this on the show a few times, that uh, Gnosticism is the mystery Babylon religion that actually spurs out of the Nephilim teachings and Enochian magic, the seven sacred 
secret sciences. What are your thoughts on that? Um, no. So the <laughs> um, it, <laughs> if you want to know the ancient mystery religion, the ancient mystery religion, um, who would know the ancient mystery, which is the Egyptian mystery religion, right? Who would mm -hmm. know the ancient Egyptian uh, mystery religion more than a boy that grew up with the Egyptians and was at the right hand of, uh, I don't know, Pharaoh? Who would know that religion better than Moses himself reincorporating yeah. it into the Torah? Folks, the mystery religion is literally an indoctrination of power and value and it all comes down to the system of bail which the invention and the magic of bail is the illusion of structure of value the illusion of structure of value becomes manifest in your monetary schemes it is the image of the beast because the beast is a destruction of real authority a destruction of real value a destruction of real power which resides in you and makes it separate from you and then establishes it in a religion and a monetary system that all works together to keep you subservient and to keep you in bondage as a slave. That, my friends, is the religions. That is the three different religions of the, uh, of the Abrahamic uh, religion. And Abraham didn't think about that either. They have used everybody to incorporate these power structures. Abraham, that's why Christ said, if you're doing the works, you're not doing the works of your father, Abraham. If you were, you'd be doing the works of father. Abraham was battling with the gods, which is why he's called my son Israel. Whenever you battle with these two gods and you recognize it and you're going to do battle with them, you become my son Israel. Israel means he who battles with God. Right now, Israel's a good thing. It is, but it's also a bad thing. It's a bad thing if you're the God that he's battling against, but it's a good thing that once you become Israel, then the city within you becomes Jerusalem. The city that rules the king where the king sits. The king sits in Jerusalem, in the city inside of you, and you physically become my son Israel. Wow. Again, everything taken from a spiritual realm and put into a physical world to keep you deceived and go, look over there. Israel's over there. It's in the Middle East. No, it's not. Israel isn't a country, and Jerusalem isn't a city, and the temple isn't a physical temple. It never was. That's why it's a temple made without hands, people. This stuff is uh, right in front of your face. Absolutely, and and that's why I, I, I titled this one The Truth Hidden in Plain Sight, because that's what I feel like all these things are like uh, Christianity. It comes from the Egyptian religions. And if you read the Cobram Bible, which is, you know, written on copper, it come, you know, out of Egypt. It's the same stories, but it's just the other perspective. It's the Egyptians instead of Moses. And I mean, it's the same exact stories um, over and over and over. And a lot of them, I think, might even give us more detail than what you get in you know, some, some cases of the Bible. Uh, now, I, I want to ask you about, um, this is quite a, you know, uh, a topic, but the reptilians. Now, a lot of people believe that we have this, you know, this double helix going on. So there's there's two, two sides of us. Now, is there a species of man in particular? Like we know uh, the elites, a lot of people believe them to be reptilian. Or is this something that's in every last one of us? Um, I don't know how that you can look at yourself in a mirror or you can look at your skin or you can recognize the double helix of your DNA or that you can read scripture and says that you're a descendant of Adam and Eve and Adam and Eve became descendants of the serpent, right? So the serpent had infiltrated them. That's what the eating of the fruit was. There wasn't an apple, okay? <laughs> the eating was literally um, the tree of knowing, right? Of mm -hmm. good and evil. What yeah. what does knowing mean in scripture? Knowing, uh, let me see. Um, Adam knew Eve and beget Seth, right? Adam knew Eve and beget Cain. Adam knew Eve and beget Abel. Um, Adam knew. So the tree of knowing was what? There was now sex. And so she had sex and recognized, oh, and then she got Adam to also eat of that. And so then she had sex with Adam too. 
<laughs> so this is where Inky was monkeying with the creation that they had because he wanted to, to recreate and procreate. Be fruitful and, and multiply, right? Those are Inky's words. Yep. Multiply so I don't have to actually create you individually like I've been doing, according to the Sumerian text. Now you can do it on your own. And so having sex became the tree of knowing. Now because of that, that's why Eve was separated from Adam. So then they could do that. So he didn't have to create this single being that both had male and female. And in doing so, he broke it down and he created the duality realm that we live in, where good and evil exists, right? And good and evil mm -hmm. became, knowing the difference between good or evil became these gods because they were already doing this. So in the advancement of, or usurping the evolutionary code of the creation, which is exactly what they did is they took a hominid and implanted their DNA in us and then took a spirit from the father in order to give it life, thus corrupting the physical form and corrupting in duality, right? Corrupted the physical form of the being of mankind and in doing so, because now our spirit resided in a broken structure of mankind, now it pollutes our spirit. And we cannot refer, return to the Father or return to source by carrying what this corrupt, what this corrupt system puts and in places in us, which is called shame, mm -hmm. right? Shame. Yeah. And Malia and I are going to be talking about that tonight. So if anybody wants to, to, because we're going to focus on that, is that the veil being rent is busting through the shame of what you have. That's the forgiveness. That's accepting it. So we're going to get into detail with that tonight. I think that you, you'll get a lot from it. Absolutely. Now, uh, you you talk about uh, Adam and Eve and the whole reproduction thing. Does this connect to the Vesica Pisces system and why there is uh, – many people believe there's like a splitting of, of spirit now, and that's why the population – um, continues to increase and grow on earth. Do you think that that is, that's what they did was split the spirit into fragments is, um, and what purpose? Yeah. And uh, absolutely. But see, I don't think, um, I, I think it was genius and, um, and also a mistake. So, uh, you could, something can be genius, right? I can go, wow, that was ingenious that that company did that. Was it against the law and illegal? Yes. Right. So, <laughs> but it's hard. So, um, the, uh, yes, I believe that the Vesca Pisces system and splitting that spirit that once you had two people, you took their spirits and you made another one and then that gets split off. And so that is the Vesca Pisces system where the soul itself gets chopped up into pieces. And that's actually what the Egyptians knew was taking place. And so that's why when you look at the Seth and Horus and you look at the story of that, and you look in, look, you got the pyramids, which are a long way away from an ocean. And inside the chamber of the pyramid, where you have Set and Horus, you have them. It is littered with, um, with starfish all mm -hmm. over the walls. Okay. That to me tells me that they knew because the starship is rep the, the starfish is representative of exactly that same system that it became that if you chop up a starfish in a million little pieces, it'll become a million starfish, all of the same DNA. Right. So yeah. the, that's kind of the that's what it is. I do believe that there are only a hundred. Uh, I think we lost Derek here, so let me see if I can fix this here. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully we can get him back really quick. Um, not exactly sure what happened there uh, with him. He was kind of mid-sentence. So everybody just be patient for a second.
Okay, I, I don't know what happened to Derek. I'm trying to get him back on the the uh, line here. His his whole feed just is gone, so I don't know what's up with that. So um, hopefully, I can get him back really quick, and you guys um, you can hang tight or whatever. He's got the link, so he should um, be popping right back. Um, never had that happen before. That's a that's a first for sure. Um, you know, um, but it's also expected, uh, really expected. Um, anytime you, you get into things like this and you start speaking about things that, you know, people don't, don't, don't want spoken of, um, sometimes you have problems with witness. Hey, like, I'm back. Okay. All right. Can you hear me? Yes, yeah, I, I can. I, hear I, my, my internet was slammed, went out completely. I've never seen that, man. I've never lost nobody completely. I, I've seen them go out for a minute, but they used to. So, I don't know. Yeah, That's but my weird, internet, man. I mean, my, my internet on um, here on my uh, on my internet, it went out completely. All of my wireless networks went completely dead. Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah I, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a fan of the Gremlins, man, but I think he was on a roll. And they, I don't know. There's, there's always something that tries to stop, you know, Whenever you're you're telling the truth here, so I think you're you were doing an amazing job. It, it always happens, brother. It's it's not uh, it's not to be unexpected. You should always expect that. I, I've just I've gotten quite used to the gremlins, and hopefully everybody else uh, figures that out as well. So, absolutely. I, I I think we still got most of chat. It looks like we do, like as far as I can tell from the viewers and stuff. So, don't yeah, look like, like we, nobody really left. Well, good. Glad you guys are, are toughing it out. <laughs> hey, you're worth it, man. That's what it is. They just know that it's a, you know, you're about to bring some heat, so they're, they're ready for it. Now, you was talking about uh, the starfish, and I think that's really crazy how we, in a sense, are the same way, right? We have a head, two arms, two legs, because so we're shaped like a star, too. So you're making that connection of how it's split and replicated the same way. And you think essentially that's what's happened, you know, with our spirits. And we was talking about the Vesica Pisces, right? Yeah, the Vesica Pisces. Oh. And, and that's why and that's why the hive mind itself, right? When you mm -hmm. speak of the body of Christ, that once you come into Christ, you become the hive mind of Christ in the same way that the enemy. I cannot let me and let me explain what why I mean that, because people, you know, the the, the detractors will will attack me and say, he says that Christ is a hive mind. And, and it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. But you also at the same time acknowledge that we're in a simulation and a construct of the enemy. What do you think the construct of the enemy is? So from a code perspective, as a code writer, as somebody that develops and writes code, I can tell you, John, that if you have a program that you wrote, you have a network that you wrote, I cannot infiltrate your network without actually mimicking your code. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, your code's not going to see it. People, this is quite simple. Okay, you just have to understand that if you're going to infiltrate the enemy's domain, then you use his tools against him. Hence the statement, be as sly as serpent, but gentle like a dove so that you maintain Christ in you, but you're going to utilize the serpent's tools against him. Folks, ding. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're just so funny sometimes. Uh, now you, okay. Recently I covered the Saturn moon matrix. Now, what is your understanding of the matrix frequency or the false reality that we have that is being used? Um, well, I lost you on the last little part of that. So the matrix okay. and the false reality, they all go together. Okay. So okay. Saturn essentially would be a broadcasting system of the frequencies necessary to maintain the Vesca Pisces, right? So everything mm -hmm. works. If this is an electric universe, we live in an electric universe. You're an electrical being. Everything has electricity in it. Crystals are everything. Everything is crystalline. Okay. So this is a chemical structure, which is why, um, Yahweh runs the stuff, right? Because Yahweh's code is the God code of this construct. Capiche? I, I lost yeah, you again there. I think you cut out. Yeah, is you're back it? now. You just you just cut out the baby before. 
Capiche. <laughs> okay, here, here let, me, let, but, let me do this. I'm going to lower my bandwidth here and limit my bandwidth. Uh, maybe that'll help out. It, it'll probably reduce my picture quality, but at least you'll be able to hear me. Okay. All right. Yeah, that's yeah. yeah, that's right. Well, so go ahead. I'm sorry. Cut, uh, where did well, I get cut, cut out? Video, well, if you need to cut video and just go audio, uh, I can do that too. So whatever you know works yeah, no, for I you. Just, I, just, I just reduced it down to a low bandwidth, so it'll probably degrade my picture quality, but you'll be able to hear me from an audio perspective. It's oh, cool. so I was they talking about you. crystal. That everything yeah. is crystalline, right? Um, everything, mm -hmm. everything here in this world is crystalline. Everything. Once you add. We're having some real deal issues today. Okay. I, I just, I just want to apologize to everybody. Derek's, um, he's having some, some issues with his internet. Maybe um, we can get into disabled video and see what that does. Um, but I, I, I was really excited to, to bring him in. Uh, you guys can see why. I mean, just the, he's got a crazy understanding of how all of this works. Um, and as far as for me personally, he's uh, been a major influence in my life and on this channel. Um, you know, just a really good person. And um, if you guys didn't see him last night on the Leap Project, I think, that was also another one that was uh, a really good um, example of just, you know, uh, how in-depth his knowledge goes. And I mean, um, you know, like just a list of questions we've, we've asked so far, like how we're just bouncing all over the place. And, you know, one person uh, can have such a firm grasp and understanding of each of these things to me in itself is uh, pretty amazing. And it just speaks to his vast amount of knowledge. Um I'm very certain, though, that we will, you know, get him back on here and we'll get this worked out. So I do apologize to everyone. It looks like there's 225 in the chat room, something like that. So I do appreciate you guys being very patient. And it looks like that already. So that's awesome. Do we have you, man? Oh, my goodness. Do we have you, man? Yeah, I had to do a full reset on all my, uh, all my wireless again. Like, I had to literally disable the whole thing and re-enable it. So I don't know what's going on because, you know, the crazy thing is, John, I don't have any of my my connection issues. I never have connection issues until I'm live talking to somebody else. And then wow. the internet work will go out. Wow. Crazy. I, I've never really seen you have I've any connection problems. Yeah, when I'm live myself, uh, I'll have some gremlins. But primarily, I mean, I've really did the whole wireless network here and all that. And... But it's, it's amazing that uh, as I'm sitting here talking, I'll watch the connection to the network go down, yet the router's mm -hmm. three feet from me. Right? Yeah. So it's not like yeah. it, it's, it's, to me, it's an interruption of something that interrupts signal between me and the router, which is only a few feet from me. So I don't know how the signal could, could get weak. It, it doesn't make any sense, but... Uh, Man, I will give you that. You, you, it's not for that. lack of effort. No, we're still doing it. <laughs> now we still um, get the effort. Still, so, uh, now, so, where did we leave off? Uh, we were talking about the Saturn Moon Matrix and um, the the ball signal that's kind of been sent out. You know, that's basically some projected you know mankind to this enslavement to this uh holographic reality that that we live in um you were elaborating on that and i think we kind of lost you towards the tail end if you wanted i can move to the next question or if you have more to add and we've lost him again man so i think the key here is definitely to cut the video on his So I really, really apologize. Um, 
you know, some things are just kind of out of control. Uh, um, appears to be tr trying to to get it together. So, uh, you know, but he's a he's a trooper. So, problems here on the um, the bandwidth. Uh, and if you, if you ever watch him, I don't really ever see him have too many of these problems. So that's kind of interesting to see that it's going on today. Uh, but some things are just kind of out of control, uh, out of our hands. So can't do much about it. I do want to thank everyone uh, that has, you know, come to the chat and is here. If we get it worked out, we'll continue. And if not, you know, I just apologize. So, um, and I know that Derek's tried, like, he's trying really hard. He's come in two or three times now. So, you know, it is what it is, right? Uh, I do want to say, though, that, um, you know, uh, I think it's very important for, for all of us to, to question everything, you know, and that's why I really like to have all the different guests on, you know, uh, people like, like Derek uh, to Give different opinions. Hey, John, I'm back. Okay, okay, man. I'm using I'm I'm using the hotspot on my phone right now, so I'm going to kill the video camera. So uh, so okay. we're not limited on the bandwidth okay. there because uh, we're using because now my entire network went out. The all the the entire wireless system is gone. So something's attacking wow. it. <laughs> Wow. Well, uh, at least we, maybe we can get you um, audio-wise. Yeah, we'll get it done. <laughs> Absolutely. Now, um, I, I'll go ahead and move to the next question. We kind of – I'm getting, like, a little bit of feedback from my, my boy. Okay, uh, let me try to fix that. How about now? I think you're good. I think you're good. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Now, um, moving on, I, I heard you speaking um, of the end of the long count, and I, I thought it was very interesting the way you were describing it. Now, can you talk about the end of the uh, age and the dimensional collapse? Yeah, so the Mayan calendar, you know, talked about 2012 uh, according to their math. And just, let me just tell you something, that the Mayans' math, still is something that we struggle with trying to understand because it is highly complex. Um, what it is, is it's a math of a 10 base system. Right now we are in a sexagesimal system of math. So that 10 base mm -hmm. said that they were far more in touch with the reality of this matrix. So their calculations of things was superior to anything that we do right now. Regardless of all the computational power right now, we still cannot compute in the same level of math that they had. So with that said, that their understanding of the end of the long count meant that there was going to now be a collapse of the world. And essentially, I believe that that actually did take place, which was a shift into a lower dimensional frequency. That mm -hmm. And that is why we lost things. I believe that that is where the Mandela effect comes from that they that in our existence okay in order to make this system of of flesh and the system of physical um understanding actually work where you can see it there are infinite universes right so what that means is that there isn't a single universe that we live in that within it there is a universe um right now john where everything is exactly the same except i touch my hat right now Mm -hmm. And uh, in one of them, but in the rest of them, I don't. <laughs> right. So, yeah. And that's yeah. difficult to understand, but that's the variables of it. So um, uh, let me put it this this way as well, that if you were in a um, if you were in a car crash and mm -hmm. you uh, or you thought and many people have probably experienced this. And I was talking to my uncle about this the other day that imagine, you know, all through your life, is there ever a time where you thought you were going to run into something with your car and you hit your brakes or you saw a car coming at you from the side and it didn't even hit you and you're like, what the heck just happened? He was yeah. right there. He was going to hit me and it didn't happen. The reality yeah. is it did. Right. So yeah. for, 
the and this is I know this is hard. This is a stretch for people to understand, but this construct is is very very complicated and it's very um let's just say it's very convoluted from a code perspective. To me I get it, right? Cuz I write code. So to me I understand mm -hmm. the different multiple layers of a network. It's in the same way that let me just put it this way, John, that um if you were to tune your radio, right? You're listening to a radio station, right? You turn yeah. it off. Did that radio station stop broadcasting? No, it's still no. broadcasting. You're just not in that frequency. The same thing is, you know, there have been people that you will live out the days of your life. Like I tell you, like I, I say that you will die ultimately at your appointed time. You won't die a second before it. There's nothing that you can do to preserve your life. You will die at your appointed time, period. Right. That's why Absolutely. you don't fear death. Because your time is set. If you're supposed to die at five years old, you will. If you're supposed to die as an infant, you will. And the thing is, is that um, you might die right now and still be alive in another universe. That Absolutely. people will mourn in that universe. And that's the whole thing. Now, this is quantum theory. Okay. It's still called mm -hmm. quantum theory. But the crazy part about it is, is the enemy that CERN is, is actually proving that this quantum theory isn't so much a theory. And so I believe that every single time they turn that on, they replicate what took place in 2012. They destroy the universe. And then when they destroy the entire universe, we shift to the next one. And the farther you drop down, the farther you get away from this existing reality. And so I believe that the end times, the end of the ages, is they all collapse, taking us completely out of this reality and destroying the matrix from top to bottom, if that makes sense. And you're witnessing yeah. the structural shift of each one of it. So do you think that that's the intent of CERN, is to destroy the matrix, or... Absolutely. Do you think that it's the Tower of Babel. It's the same thing that the Tower of Babel was about. Really? That's wow. why they have Shiva, the destroyer, as their symbol outside of CERN. Wow. Wow. Yeah, that makes a, a, a whole bunch of sense. And that would also um, make a lot of sense of why uh, the god of this matrix would not be happy with, with them doing he what they're doing. He would not be happy with CERN, and he would blow it up like he did, right? He, in the same way yeah. that the God of this world, the God of this age came down the tower that they had built, right? That tower was to break outside of this matrix. The tower mm -hmm. of Babel, essentially, we now just have a, a ring of Babel now. Wow. And this, this goes to, there's nothing new under the sun. And I, I talk about this uh, quite a bit, how the Assyrian, Nimrod, Nebuchadnezzar, all these stories are the same thing that's playing out right now. And uh, I think that was a, a, a missing piece for me right there was uh, that CERN was the hour of Babel. I, I, I've always kind of had a hunch, I, I, you know, I, but I've heard it also associated a lot with uh, the bottomless pit. Um, why, where do you think that the bottomless pit is coming from then? Well, think about this. Um, you could, you can't open up one hole without opening up the other, right? You, you can't mm, open up yeah. the hole to the connection to source without opening up a hole in the bottom. We live in a binary system, folks. There is no way to avoid the binary system. Okay, the binary system wow. is going to exist. And there isn't a thing you can do about that. So in that, you open up the heavens, you open up the bottomless pit as well. And that's where the Battle of Armageddon takes place. Wow. Wow. That just uh, that just blew my mind right there. That gave me a, a total new understanding of CERN and what's going on. Now, um, I do kind of want to switch gears just a little bit to... Um, you know, uh, Babylon, I, and this, you know, this kind of goes off of what you were talking about last night with Rex, but also what, once again, you know, uh, Gary Wayne brought on here and he believes it's the Vatican. I disagree. I think that Babylon is the United States. Um, you know, what is, what is your thoughts on that and kind of why? <laughs> 
Well, the, the whole thing is, is that um, this is where somebody wants to point their finger, put their finger on a specific thing. There is no mm -hmm. question that the description of, of mystery Babylon, remember, mystery Babylon, we already know that Rome was Babylon of old. We know mm -hmm. that already, right? You had first the Tigris and the Euphrates, so you had ancient Mesopotamia, and then it established itself in Rome. And now you have John writing and saying in Revelation, mystery Babylon. It, it wasn't a mystery to him that it was Rome. It's not Rome again. The difference is the extension, the arm of Rome is the United States. We are a Christian nation, right? We also have yeah. the exact same monetary system as Rome. We also have the, the image bearing the likeness of man and animal. Look at a coin, folks. Pick up a quarter. Bears the likeness of man and animal, right? What animal is it? Oh, I don't know. It's only the sign of Babylon, the eagle, yep. right? And, yep. and so you, you've you already got all of this stuff. So Rome is Babylon as well. It's the extension, but we are the head of it. So we're the, we're the spear. Rome is just the anchor. They run everybody. They run them through the Masons. They run them through all the all of these secret societies, Rome and Rome in control. Who's control of in control of Rome? Oh, I don't know. There's these people that are this tiny little group that control all of the monetary systems and all the banks, even though it's against their law called usury. And that would be the Jews of Israel. Yeah. So you still have the Romans and the Hebrews collaborating, but we are the hammer. We are Babylon. I mean, she is in our harbor for Pete's sake, right? We have a massive statue of the queen of Babylon in our harbor, and she is considered Lady Liberty. The Statue of Liberty is Semiramis. It is the queen of Babylon sitting in a harbor. What, how, do you, how do you turn Rome into the structure? If Rome burn up today, there wouldn't be any merchants upset right? No. The dollar would still be around. The merchants would still be buying gold and silver and incense, and they would still be trading the stock market. In fact, they would probably be doing better, right? The monetary system would probably grow. If Rome burned right now, nothing would change. What would change? Oh, I don't know. If New York City went away and the stock markets and the United Nations and everything went boom, I could promise you the whole world will be mourning and they will weep and lament over the burning of the smoke of the whore of Babylon, which is us, because the entire financial system of the world will be decimated in a single hour, which is exactly what it is. See, that's what I'm saying. I don't understand how anybody, that's all you have to do is ask your question. Somebody demands that it's Rome. It's not. How can you say that all of the results would happen? Eliminate Rome and then tell me the results of it. Eliminate Rome's uh, influence on the financial markets. They don't have an influence on the financial markets. What they have is an influence on the structure of the church. Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah. So the church has become the arm of Babylon, right? Enslaving people and making sure that you honor the law and, Oh, and rendering under Caesar, paying your taxes, being the good slave that you are, not recognizing that render to Caesar under Caesar's what is Caesar's means give that crap back to him. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I was reading uh, the Hebraic Roots Version Bible, and it's got these little side notes in it. And you know how it's talking about, like, the 25 items that are exported out of Babylon that really, you know, let me – at least think that I had this right with it being in the United States was that the only place in the world that all items are actually exported from is the United States of America. No other country fits the description. I mean, there's no other one even remotely fits the description. No, not at all. Not at all. So I, I'm, I'm definitely in agreement with you. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, uh, I, I, I just don't see how the Vatican, and that's my my kind of sentiment, is I don't see how they would have the effect that, you know, the United States 
would have uh, just on this year, the economics of it. If you think about how our entire monetary system is based off what we do here and that if this domino collapses, every other domino goes down with it. And, um, you know, when they, they mentioned the most it's, plain, it's obvious, it's, it's obvious. It's right in front of your face. Another truth hidden in plain sight. <laughs> right in front of your face. Now, yeah. Like I said, if you want to hide the actual, if there was a physical Ark of the Covenant, right? And you wanted to hide yep. that, thing, you would put it in the window of a pawn shop in Phoenix, Arizona, right? Yep. You'd put it right yep. in front of everybody's face because nobody would believe it was the actual Ark of the Covenant because it was in a pawn shop and in, in the window. They, would, they, they wouldn't believe it. Obfuscation. Um, obfuscation is the hiding of things. And in technology, obfuscation um, the best obfuscation is hidden right in plain sight. Some of the most uh, nefarious code ever written is put like right in right on, in the Windows folder. They don't try to hide it because all of the people that are looking to solve the problem of the hack in the machine are all looking in the depths of the code and they're looking for where it would be hidden. And they put it like right in the Windows folder, right in front of your face because you won't look there. Yeah. Wow. Wow, it makes sense to me. I mean, uh, you know, if if you really want to, you know, truly hide something, it seems like people will miss right, what's right in front of their face more times than not. Now, now uh, speaking of people missing what's right in front of their face, uh, what do you feel is the true intentions that's been behind the government shutdown and the border wall? Uh, again, if uh, that's a distraction, it always is because the border wall. What they're talking about is what. 12 or 15 billion dollars um they spent that um arguing about it okay yep. it has nothing to do with money that tells me right away it's complete bs not only that the federal government prints money at will it's not like it's a difficult thing in fact they just printed uh, another trillion dollars during the course of the shutdown right this is this is the the news that they don't want you to see here they're arguing about a measly 15 billion dollars okay $15 billion sounds like a lot. It's nothing. While they were arguing about that $15 billion, they wrote a, a check for $1 trillion just to finance the interest on our debt. $1 trillion. Wow. Now, you know what $15 billion is opposed to that $1 trillion? If I took a Nothing. $1 bill, and I took the 100 pennies and I chopped up those 100 pennies into tens of thousands of little tiny chunks of copper. It would be a fraction of the tiny little chunk of copper that I chopped up those pennies into. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. You wouldn't even be able to see the tininess of that little thing. $15 billion is nothing, nothing to $1 trillion that they wrote a check to finance nothing. John, accept interest on our debt. Okay, so that $1 trillion that this country just wrote a check for on your back, okay, that debt, yeah. that makes you a yeah. bigger bond slave, right? That $1 trillion won't do a single thing. It won't feed a single mouth. It will not clothe a single person. It will not build a single road. It will not help a single portion of infrastructure. It will not heal a single person. It will do nothing except finance the debt of the slaves that we have. One trillion dollars. So what does that move People, say to you? Government, this government is going to burn for this. So, but what does that say to you, though, that they're 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 writing uh, another one trillion dollars? Does that mean that they're going to try to keep this afloat a little longer, or is that them trying to implode it faster? Both. It, it it's um, it's it's like putting it's like healing a um, a fire hose that busted by grabbing a children's water balloon and connecting it to repair the hole. It's a very mm -hmm. temporary fix but it's an inevitable explosion. So wow. they're only buying time so they can finish what they need to accomplish. Everybody knows that the explosion is coming. Everybody. It's not a secret. No, no, it's definitely not a secret. And I think that people, 
are probably surprised that the economic collapse hasn't come before now. I mean, you know, just honestly, they thought it was going to come back in 2008. And I think every year after, we've kind of just been holding our breath. And uh, when Trump got into office, one of my first thoughts was, you know, the way he is with, with money and finances, I just kind of knew that his whole job was to A, orchestrate World War III, and to B, orchestrate economic collapse. That these were the two things that this guy is probably there for and um, could very well be the very last president of the United States. Oh, that, that, that's his job. Uh, I, yeah. I believe absolutely he's, he's the last president. Uh, I don't, you know, and I don't like putting things out there like that, but I, I believe that he's the last president. And if that means that he's the last president in the structure that we have, um, then that's probably the case too. But they will, yeah. look, I mean, the dollar collapsed in 2008. They call it the mortgage meltdown to keep you away from thinking about the dollar. The, the, uh, the bomb that went off happened to go in the mortgage uh, community of banks, but the dollar collapsed across the board as a result of it. And so our dollar was worth nothing. And Ben Bernanke became the Antichrist essentially at that point by um, inventing what is, is truly the water balloon on the fire hose, which is called quantitative easing which was a mandatory spending or printing of $150 billion a month to emulate. So they would spend the money to emulate that people believed in the dollar. So what gives the dollar, what gives a fiat currency, um, what gives a fiat currency its value is your belief, John. Mm -hmm. And your belief is calculated only by one thing, you spending the money, right? Yeah. So yep. as we spend money, it signifies that we believe it still has value. When the dollar collapsed and the mortgage collapsed, everybody stopped instantly spending their money. They stopped spending it, period. All of the indicators, that's why it progressively, it started like, oh, well, the market lost a little bit. <clears throat> no, no. <clears throat> they stopped trading. And they just wanted out. And so they abandoned it. You cannot have a mass withdrawal of money. And that's what happens. You have a mass withdrawal of money, but no mass influction of money into the market. So basically what happened was everybody stopped believing in God in an instant. God being yeah. the money, right? Yeah. Once they no longer believe in that money, the dollar's value goes to zero because only indicator that gives it its value is your belief in it, you spending it. So now Ben Bernanke invented quantitative easing and he gave it a name, quantitative easing. So it makes you feel like that we've done this before, um, <laughs> but we hadn't. And what it was is a printing of $150 billion and forcing it to be spent in the marketplace. Every road was rebuilt. Every bridge was rebuilt. Every single agency, go buy stuff. People were laughing about, you know, they were talking about uh, Department of Homeland Security buying a billion rounds of ammo, right? Yeah. Neglecting the fact that why would no, you know, that, so it brings up, brought up other questions. Wait a minute. In Vietnam, we fired 10 million rounds for the entire war, 11 years, right? 10 million rounds of ammo and somehow 1 billion, which is 1,000 million, right? So we're talking yep. a significant amount more than we fired in Vietnam, the Department of Homeland Security bought. Well, they bought it because that was also part of the quantitative easing program. Wow. <laughs> it just became convenient. They had to spend the money. So the money had to be spent. There were underground things, deals like that, that were made by the thousands, where literally billions of dollars every single month were being sent to companies to literally uh, to, uh, for instance, like uh, the, the solar company that went down uh, during Obama's administration, right? They injected $350 million into that thing every year for four years. It had nothing to do with solar panels. They could care less. It, they could care less about solar energy, right? Yeah, that had everything yeah. to do with quantitative easing. Get the money into the marketplace any way you can. And you know, the funny thing is, I, I won't mention who it is, but I had a conversation with a very, very well-known music producer, extremely well-known music producer who went with Bono. And I'm only saying this and you know, not saying his name because uh, he, um, he didn't tell me that I could. 
uh, but he's an extremely well-known music producer. And he went with Bono to the World Bank, which is just an extension of the Federal Reserve, right? And yep. this is during the whole quantitative easing. And they were asking for $100 million for a food for the poor project in Africa. They were only asking for a hundred million. Yeah. The World Bank granted them 10 billion. They wow. asked for a hundred million and they gave them 10 billion. Wow. Right. People don't just give away out. billions of dollars without a reason. Now you understand that doing something so flagrantly, where's the impact? So on the dark web, if you went on the dark web right now, John, and there are crowdfunding, mm -hmm. um, uh, there are crowdfunding sites on the dark web, okay, where people crowdfund with Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies because they're anonymous, and the yeah. crowdfunding is for assassinations, right? Wow. So yeah, wow. literally. <clears throat> so you have all of these world leaders, you have movie stars, people that people hate, and you've all these things. And for this movie star, they will have raised, um, they're trying to raise uh, uh, enough money. Like they'll just say, hey, we're going to keep this crowdfunding open until it reaches a certain amount. And when it gets to that certain amount, we will we'll kill that person, right? And they'll go, here's what it's going to cost for the operation to kill that person. <laughs> Obama was on there. And this is during the Obama administration, okay? Obama was on there and he was hated all over the world, right? They only needed $20 million to kill him. And they had only raised, of that 20 million on the dark web, they had only raised a half a million dollars. The highest priced murder on the dark web for this was Ben Bernanke. And he was gonna cost $250 million to kill. And they had raised a hundred and eighty million of it. Wow. You're talking about a man that number one, if it's going to cost him more to kill than it would a world leader, Obama, on the dark web, you could bet your bottom dollar that he's got a lot more protection than the president. Yes. Right. Yes. Being the chairman yeah. Fed, the Fed, literally the guy, the guy that owns the presidency is the 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 Federal Reserve, right? The the president yeah. works. Federal Reserve people, make no mistake about it. That's why the Treasury Department, which is the arm of the Federal Reserve that is in the federal government, is the one that runs the what? Oh, I don't know, the Secret Service. The Secret Service was established when Lincoln went against the World Bank and printed the greenback dollar. He was then murdered for doing that. And then they established the Secret Service and their, their motto was, we can never allow a president to be killed again. Okay, again, a truth and the lie at the same time. They can never allow a president to get out of line so that he has to be killed because we'll kill him. So the, the Secret Service <laughs> job is to make sure that the president does what he's supposed to on behalf of the Treasury Department. Otherwise, the Secret Service yeah. would work for, I don't know, the president, right? They would report into yeah. the White House. They report yeah. into the treasury. Think about that. If you think of when Trump first got into office, it was private security. When he first came in, and it wasn't a month in that they they took away his private security and gave him secret service forcibly. And and you could see the capitulation from that moment on, too, if you like think about it. That was he might have had a plan to to buck the system i don't know but that that quickly went away Trump and went into the presidency saying that he was going to abolish the federal reserve okay yep, yep. Um, as president you don't get to do that unless you want to be killed and by the way it won't do you any good abolishing the federal reserve because the mandate that congress gave them is a permanent mandate it's a private bank the Federal Reserve. It's a private bank. It has shareholders. It's not a government institution, but they do have a congressional mandate that can never be refunded. It can never be returned. It can never be made null and void. That's the stupidity of the people that allowed it. They were bought hook, line, and sinker. This country was purchased by the banks. Mm. It was literally bought, and that was the deal. 
So this whole illusion that the, the QAnon, okay, so this whole illusion that QAnon and this whole movement has these people under that somehow if they take down the Fed, that this is going to be problem solved. We're we're in the good now. We're, we're America's great again, and and all these things. This is just an illusion. All an illusion. That's not going to happen. And if it does happen. It happens because that is their intentional collapse, right? So there will be a one world currency. There will be. They will establish that. That's also spoke of, uh, spoken of in Revelation. That's where the image of the beast, the beast is killed, okay? Mm -hmm. Has a bullet to its head. Boom, they shoot the dollar and the dollar rises again with a bullet wound in its head. It just has a new name. Same wow. beast. Oh. Wow. So do you think, okay, let me ask you this. Uh, do you think that uh, Trump kind of fits the bill for the, the son of perdition or, or, you know, one of these biblical characters that we also see associated with this um, with the, the horns of a lamb spake like a dragon, or is this just another metaphor for uh, the, the monetary system? Um, there's see the metaphor itself never applies to a single thing. Okay. It's kind of okay. like when I talk about the two witnesses and people that believe they're two witnesses. Okay. <laughs> the two witnesses is not two men. Mm -hmm. It is multiple things. The two witnesses are the lie and the truth witness the lie, right? And the understanding mm -hmm. of the lie, which people believe is truth where this lie now becomes visible because of the truth and them in the middle. These become the two witnesses, the truth and the lie. The mm -hmm. Old Testament God and the New Testament God, two witnesses. The Old Testament itself and the New Testament, two witnesses, right? Yep. <clears throat> the two gods of old, Enki, Enlil, the evidence of who they are and that they've done this, two witnesses. Um, and then there's also... From a Christ standpoint, there are two witnesses, Moses and Elijah. Moses being the one that helped the enemy and worked on behalf of Yahweh. Elijah being the one that exposed that. Moses and Elijah, which why, why Christ was transfigured into Moses and Elijah on the mountain to demonstrate the lie, the, the lawmaker that had adhered to what Yehovah, Yahweh wanted. And Elijah, who said, bullshit on Moses. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> two witnesses there. And this is uh, the two witnesses, the blue and the red Kachina, two witnesses. Come on, people. There is no single understanding because we live in a binary system. If there is nothing new under the sun, the blue and the red Kachina represent the lie and, and, uh, and the truth, the blue and the red Kachina also represent the duality, the positive and negative, a hot, uh, a, a hot sun and a cold sun, the blue being cold, the hot being red, right? There is yeah. no such thing as having a single hot sun without also having a cold one. Otherwise yep. the whole function of the universe or the solar system doesn't function. There is no such thing as negative without positive. There's no such thing as positive without negative. There's no such thing as light without darkness or darkness without light. There's no such thing as hot without cold. The binary system is hot and cold is a single element. Positive and negative are a single element, right? Good and evil, single element in this place. That's why we got to yep. supersede this place and get out of this, this, this awful place. And you do. You have to supersede this. You've got to be the middle way. You're in between the yin and the yang. The line between the black and white of the yin and the yang is the middle way. Wow. Wow. All of this points to this. So this is, again, so, John, when you talk about metaphors, right, we always want to lock on a single idea of it. And then mm -hmm. somebody else has yeah. an idea and they go, that's a lie. It's the same thing with scriptures. That's why it's called faith, people. To argue with me about your faith and to say that I'm lying defies everything that faith is, right? Mm -hmm. if, yeah. if somebody thinks that I'm lying, the only thing that they're seeing is that they're believing a different version of what I'm saying. So in their mind, only in their mind, am I lying? That doesn't make me a liar. That doesn't make what I'm saying a lie. No. It makes their life a lie. And so as a result, they then attack me, 
making their belief in Christ and who he is and the peace that he gives a lie, proving that they don't know him, which is why he said, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So all of these things, this is where the spiritual battle takes place in these ideas and understanding. So when you look at these metaphors of Cyrus and Caesar and the son of perdition, does Trump meet it? Does Trump meet the bill? Yes, he does. If he goes and stands in that third temple that they're building of Cyrus, yes, he absolutely meets that. And they'll do that intentionally. Look, their goal is to fulfill prophecy. Yeah. How easy is it when you're in power to fulfill prophecy? You can build a third temple. You could put the most evil person you know in the center of it, right? The guy that represents mm -hmm. money, right? Goes around flashing his dollar bills. He, he's that it. That's it. Yeah, yeah. And how easy is that to do? Go build a third temple. What? That's difficult? No, it's not. But it defies everything that Christ said. It doesn't mean that the enemy's not going to bring that he knows he's, uh, you know, that his destruction time is coming. He knows it. He knows that that the gig is up. This is up. There is no circumstance, there is no version of this, not historically, not ever, where he comes out the victor, okay? There is no way, there is no possible way, there is nothing that can happen that, can, that he can avoid his demise. And so they have no problem fulfilling that prophecy. In fact, he'll fulfill it himself. This is his job. And he knows his job it comes to an end. He knows it. It's not like he doesn't. This is his gig. It's like if I hired you to, you know, if I was the guy that hired John to go, look, I, I want you to go, you know, into Afghanistan. And I want you to kill 100,000 rebels. And here's all the soldiers and everything. And once you've got to the number 100,000, then I want you to kill yourself. But everybody else in your family will be taken care of. Your empire will be, you know, there's an exchange over here. Or you'll mm -hmm. be forgiven this debt. We'll let your family live. We'll do something. So there's a deal that's made. It's the same thing. You'd get through those 100,000 people and you'd kill yourself because, hey, that's the obligation. That's what your job was. Absolutely. Absolutely. Especially if there was something that you considered um, of value, equal value to your life. And if you understand that this is just a simulation, a matrix, you probably wouldn't place a lot of value on your physical life to start with. So, and I, and I, think that these people that are in power they absolutely they understand every last bit of this i mean they they better than you know i do so um they're they're the ones who have been um you know manipulating people's will to their to their benefit for a long a long time so um it's yeah. it's just amazing to me though to see how all of this is just playing out right before our eyes and then to see how we get this it's a, and it's a, it's a teaching in, um, you know, uh, Christianity, mainstream churches that they're ignoring the historical aspect of the Bible, but they're also ignoring the prophetical aspect that comes from revelations. Um, and why do you think that is? Why do you think that we're seeing, um, you know, Christianity feel so threatened by both the past and the future of what is to come. Do you think that's because of the modern day apostasy in the whole state that they're in? Yes. Modern day apostasy is so out of control. It's um, the, the, the apostasy has become the government. The government has become the church. The church has become, I mean, just look at politics, right? Yep. It's just two different sides of the same church. And the reality is it is the same church. The opposition is a fake opposition. Uh, the, the, you can't have, first of all, um, who do you think is getting abortions to the rate that we've killed a hundred million babies in five years in this country? What is it? Is it, we're, we're a Christian nation. 98% of this nation considers itself Christian. So where do these hundred million babies get killed from? Oh, I don't know. Who's doing that? Um, Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Who would say what? Oh, the church stands up as long as they preach that abortion's wrong. Well, then then they're okay. No, your church is having abortions as much as anybody else. You speak it with your lips, but your heart is far from me. Right? Again, yep. you can witness the apostate church everywhere you go. The hypocrisy of the people within the church is staggering. 
It's yes. staggering. You can go up to almost any, I could probably walk into any church, find the person, look at them, listen to them in church, watch them hold their Bible and everything, and then conduct surveillance on them and watch the guy leave his <laughs> wife and have sex with a couple hookers and have his two yep. little mistresses on the side. Also this little shady business deal over here. I know I was part of that world. I know what it looks like. I was the apostate church. Right. That's Absolutely. why I tell you, yep. look, and, and the crazy part is, is that John, when you leave the apostate church, okay. Craziest thing yep. is I leave the apostate church. I'm no longer invo involved in any business deal, much less a shady one, any business deal whatsoever. I no longer yep. have the money that I used to have. I no longer have a Lamborghini. I no longer live somebody else somewhere else and have, you know, I don't own stock and shares and companies. I don't have millions of dollars in cryptocurrencies or in cash. I don't have bank accounts all over the world. I don't have any of that stuff. I don't go to the church. I don't pretend and carry my Bible and talk godly around those people. I come to you. I live in a trailer. I have nothing. I want nothing. I need nothing except what I have with me. And even then I don't need it to be whole. And yet I'm accused of everything that I used to do. Yeah. I yep. wasn't accused of it then. That's the craziest part. I wasn't accused of, of being a, a jerk then. I wasn't accused of having shady business deals then. Now I no longer have them. And all the things that I used to do, I'm accused of today. It's truly mind-numbing. But that's yes. what's going to happen. <laughs> so you cannot leave. And that's the whole point. They're like, that's the accuser. The accuser says, Oh, you're a shady businessman. No, bro. That's what forgiveness is all about. When you repent and turn from those things, the Absolutely. enemy will send his hordes. He'll send the Lori Hills. He'll send the Edens. He'll send these people. He'll send the Alpha Omega. He'll send those people to accuse you of the things that you used to be because that's the accuser. They become employed by them. You will have them in your life. And every one of you that come into this truth will then have those in your life too. You'll be accused of that. And trust me, yeah. every single one of these people would love to kill you just like they would love to kill me. And I get the death threats. And you know what they're, you know what they say? I'll kill you in Jesus name. Which is insanity. It's insanity. It's like they missed the whole damn point. I don't get it. I gear up these attacks against people and, you know, and then they say that they got the love of God and then say, well, how can you, how can you love this guy? Or how can you, you know, I, I don't get it. I thought that the number one command was to love one another. I, I thought that that was numero uno. I thought that that was the top one. So, you know, they'll, and they'll justify, this is what blows me away. You know, they'll claim that Jesus is their Messiah yet. They'll take Paul's words and then supersede what Over Jesus it. said. Every time. It's like, proving, I don't get it. Proving, proving that Paul was the Antichrist. That, that's exactly what he said. Absolutely. For there will be many Antichrist, for they have already come. They were among us, us Jews. They were one of us, but they went out yeah. from us. Mm-hmm. Same yep. thing. And, and by the way, you know, they, and, and he also said, they will kill you and think they are doing the work of God. And isn't that the truth? I mean, isn't that what it's yeah. become? Um, and even if it isn't a physical death, it's a character assassination, just the same. They are trying to, and I think that's the main reason of why you uh, experience a lot of your attacks, because it shatters uh a great deal of what's happened, you know, in the Christian message. Um, and I mean, even people like me, uh, you know, I'm, I'm called a heretic and I'm told I'm going to hell daily by these people. Uh, and I think that we have to be everybody and their differences. I don't always agree with everyone. I always believe the same as everyone, but I don't have to, you know, I think that, you know, you have been a, a big part of that kind of as an influence to me and knowing that you know your truth you know and if you know your truth then you don't have to tear nobody else's down and i think that that's you know that's key into being sovereign in in this whole system right there um is to not yeah, feel well, the well, need well, to you know, 
Exactly. It's like, you know, people, people write me all the time and they go, how can you like Jeff Doherty that he says this and he says that and he says this and he says that I go, you know what, whatever his truth is, is his, you want me to tear yeah. that guy down to do what, what, what would that accomplish? What would that Nothing. do? If you disagree with Jeff Doherty, well then don't watch his stuff. Right. Absolutely. If you disagree with me, you don't like what I say, then don't watch. It's quite simple. Don't, you know, if, if you're not fed from it, well, then you don't go eat something that doesn't fill you. So don't eat of it. Go find <laughs> what you can eat that fills you. I'm not going to, John, you could say something I completely disagree with. Uh, first of all, yep. I'll never say I disagree with it because uh, if there's one thing that I've learned is that I might think something's untrue, right? And be like, I disagree with that. And as a result of me disagreeing, I never could actually see the truth that did reside in that statement. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's I see what like you're people, saying. It's kind of like people will never ever hear the truth of 9 11 because they can never get past the part where that 9 11 was an inside job. Nope. It wasn't yep. an inside job. And as long as they believe it wasn't, they will never even listen to the evidence that would present and prove that it was. So it's the same thing. I won't say if you said 9-11 was an inside job, right? And I disagree with that. I will never say I disagree with that. I'll go, you know, it doesn't feel right to me. I don't know, but I don't know all the details. So if I'm shown the details, then maybe I might be convinced that it is. And so because I'm open, then I'll hear it. And people go, no, no, you need to be closed. I'll tell you what that closed mind is. That closed mind, people, that closed mind is the crown of thorns that they put on Jesus' head. That's the prison of your mind. Put your mind back in prison, right? He had a halo above his head. He had, he had risen to that. He had superseded his manly consciousness. And they said, yo, no, you don't. Put that crown back on the uh, crown of thorns back on your head. Anybody that attacks you, John, for what you say, they still have the crown of thorns on Christ's head. He yeah. never rose in their mind, right? Yeah. He never rose because yeah. he still got the crown of thorns. You're still, you're still relegated with a closed mind. And that's why he said, if you will, you will see this. If you can, this will happen. That's how he spoke that way. If you can do it, if you can get past this, that's why he said the first commandment, love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, and what? Mind. Love with all your mind. Now he added mind. The Old Testament said, love the Lord with all your heart and soul. He added mind. So he was like, yeah. uh, no, I'm adding mind to it. So he said, they go, oh, he didn't come to break the law. Really? Well, he added to the law. He also subtracted yeah. from it because he removed what wasn't necessary by issuing two commandments. Love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, and mind. And one like it, like he said, which is just like it. Yep. Now, here's the amazing part, which is just like it, John. Not a little bit like it, just like it. Love the Lord with all thy heart, soul, and mind. Hmm. Where is the Lord that you have to love? Where is the father? The father resides in your neighbor. Love thy neighbor as thyself and you will find the father which resides where? Oh, I don't know, inside this place. <laughs> Those two laws, he tells you where the father lives and who the father is. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's amazing. And I think that this is why it's really important for people to... Um, you know, I think, and I think you put this out there the best too. The whole be a passerby, um, walk the middle way, not to put yourself on one side of anything or another, um, because we do we 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 polarize ourselves and keep ourselves from you know gaining truth this way. This is this is some this is the walls of the system. This is what they do, and anytime we put ourselves in a box, put a label on us. Um, we don't allow other truths to enter into our life. And I, I just think uh, you do an amazing job, man. So I want to, I want to thank you for coming on. And I just want to thank you for the time that you've given and 
just all that you do, Derek. Uh, a lot of people don't know. Um, just this guy is a really good dude and just all the good things that you do and you don't brag about them on your channel and stuff because you know that's what scripture says you're not supposed to but i'm allowed to so i, I want to say that you're in, and you do amazing things for people really really grateful for you so. well i appreciate that don you know the the thing is, is um uh, i don't talk about the things that i do behind the scenes because again um that is what would corrupt it um, even in me, right? That if I get value from telling people the things that I do, well, that's my that's my reward. I've exchanged yep. the real value for the beast system again, a false currency, a false value. I live as I speak. I do. I live as I speak. <laughs> am, I am I fallible? Yes. You know what? Look, all the prophets said, I, I come from an unclean people right my lips speak uncleanliness we're a mess all of us yep. so i don't you know i don't pretend to think that i'm not part of mankind i'm just as messed up have i superseded that have i elevated my consciousness do i do the things that i've done before no do i hate people no any one of my haters any one of my detractors john you know this personally if they pick yep. up the phone and they call me, they'll find a loving voice on the other line. Absolutely. I won't have Absolutely. an argument with them. I won't attack them. I won't tell them they're idiots, but they will attack me. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> I live as I speak. Does that mean that I'm perfect? No, of course not. Right? Yeah. And, and I think that's the, the dog. I am constantly self-correcting. Right? If I ever if I ever have a thought that is um, unclean or angry mm -hmm. about something, boy, mm -hmm. I go instantly inside myself and go, where did that come from? <laughs> right? But you, where did that come from? I think the fact that you're speaking these truths, though, you're a lot of times, and I notice that this happens to myself too, that you get hit with this dogmatic view because they think of like preachers and things like that and how they lie to everyone and act like they're perfect. Right. And because we're not perfect, you know, and don't try to be that they see that as something, some sign of weakness or it takes away from the things that are said. When in my opinion, when you're showing your humanity to, to, to a people you're being honest and you're being genuine and that's transparency that's that's truth to me though so. well john here's the psychology behind why people attack you okay they want to prove when all of a sudden particularly for, for me and my channel when somebody comes to my channel they can hear the truth but then they begin to look at what people say about me and they begin to project that onto me Right. So they'll go, he thinks he's the Messiah. Right. You've you've been on the phone with me and been on. We've had conversation where I go, no, no, no you're the Messiah. Right. You, you the savior yeah. is yep. in you. So you say, so why would yep. I ever claim to be something that for for everybody else? No. <clears throat> Do I come bringing the message of the Messiah? Sure. I'm speaking in Christ. Of course. Does that mean that I'm the only one? No. Have I ever said that there is only one? No. So they they instantly see in you the bad part, just like scripture says, the darkness does not like the light. So because I shine with the light of this truth and people see me as being in that truth and being more righteous than them, the last thing they want is for me to be around being a reflection of who they're not. Absolutely. Right? When you become a reflection of who they're not, you are the light and they are darkness and they do not want you present. And so, and John, we were talking about this earlier for people like this, this lady, right? Yeah. That was in this truth, that listened to the videos, came into this truth. And then once she did, when she realized that she had to abandon this Yahweh God, this single thing, right? Yep. That became such an issue for her that she threw everything out. Everything that she knew was true, she knew, she threw it out, okay? Now, 
The only way that she can go back to her previous way of thinking in the dogma church is to try to destroy me. So the attempt has nothing to do with me. The attempt is selfish on every level. She needs to destroy me in order to destroy the truth that she came into. She can't get rid of it in her heart. She knows it's true. And she's trying to go back into the matrix. Now, this is the guy that obviously what did what? Tried to kill everybody on the ship and kill Neo. Why? So he could go back into the matrix. That's the same thing. That's what the that's what the entire the the entire story of that is. Is that he yes. knew the truth. And right. then what did he do? She was like, no, no, Morpheus freed us. He didn't free us. He gave us this crap. I eat nothing now. I live in poverty. I got to stay in this crap. I eat the same goop every day. He's irritated that he's not in his fantasy world anymore. Right? Yeah. Because guess yeah. what? And what that what is that? The seeds that get sown on the different soil. Okay? So this yeah. lady the, this lady represents that parable. That the that the persecution that comes as a result of the truth that you have gets plucked up by the enemy because you had no root in you. That's why this person has gone through every religion, can tell you, I've been a Mormon, I've been a Jehovah's Witness, I've been a Seventh-day Adventist, I've been in Scientology, I've been, <laughs> there was no good soil anywhere. You've never had good soil. That's mm. because you're not actually seeking the truth. You're seeking to listen to somebody that will tickle your ears. I'm not gonna yeah. tickle your ears. And if you come into this truth, I tell you point blank, this is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done. There is nothing more difficult, but it is also the most free and the most liberating thing because you are no longer a slave to anyone or anything. It's just, it's, it is life, but you're living in this hell, but you're alive. I'm alive, baby. <laughs> Man, I love it. I love it, bro. I just think that you know, and that lady. It's it's what 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 really points it out. You know, to me is to me it feels like in her case in particular, she's trying to justify her own righteousness. Um, there's no really, and if you see, there's there's she's not attacking you on a specific doctrine. She's not attacking you on a specific belief. She attacks me too, just for being your, your buddy. Uh, that's what I'm saying. It's just, it's insanity. It's got no method to her madness. I think she just wants to destroy you because exactly what you just said. She thinks that if she gets ready, well, that's what I'm saying, John. And, and, yeah. And here's proof of this. Okay. The attack mm -hmm. that I get is she says that Yahweh is the Satan. Yes, I do. I don't dispute that. Yahweh is the enemy. All right, people? There's no disputing that. But here's the whole thing. Somehow I'm more dangerous than the guy that has a satanic channel. Right? I, I'm because there's channels out there. There are Satanists out there in channels. There are thousands of channels that are bigger than mine of people talking about Gnosticism, right? that are talking about the gospel of Thomas, yep. the gospel of Philip. No, 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 no. They don't attack them. The only people that attack me are people that came into the truth through me and now are rebelling against what they knew. That's how you know. That's why it says you will know them by their fruit, right? They're not mm -hmm. attacking the real yeah. Satanists out there. They're only attacking the one that they feel led them to a different truth than they wanted when it became hard for them, when they began to understand that speaking the things that they spoke, they got attacked for it. They were like, oh my gosh, I got to get away from this stuff. I can't handle those attacks. And then those attacks, yeah. that's where the, because of the persecution, those seeds are plucked up. And then they figure out the only way I'm going to forget this truth is by destroying the credibility of the box. Like I've said, Try to put me in a box or destroy me. So I got news for these people. Um, you're not going to destroy me. You will never destroy this truth. You will never destroy my, my channel. Every single time you make a video that says you hate me, you build my channel up. I get 250 new subscribers every single day. Thank you. I appreciate this.
because more people <laughs> come to the truth as a result of your opposition. Do you know why that happens that way? John and I spoke about this, right, John? Mm -hmm. Folks, that happens because there is no such thing as positive without negative. So there is no truth in what I say unless there are people saying that I'm lying. If I'm speaking something that isn't fully the truth, nobody will say that uh, that will be my opposition. Yeah. The same way that Microsoft needs an Apple. That's why Microsoft invested in Apple and saved Apple when it was going bankrupt. Microsoft is still Absolutely. to this day the single largest shareholder of Apple because they need Apple to exist. They need an opposing uh, force. It has to happen. They cannot succeed unless there is something that they're succeeding against. They need the barometer. The more people attack me, the more people hear this truth and see it as truth because the people that attack me are simply reinstating the dogma of the church and, and they think they've left the church. So they've gone back and they're trying to fight their way back into the church. John, you've experienced this. The Cummings have, have experienced it. That's called the spirit of Jezebel, right? The spirit of Jezebel yep. is that that attacks the, the, the savior, not me as the savior, but the message of the Messiah, the true one. They go back to the lie. They go back to the dogma and they're trying desperately to impress the God of this world so he will give them favor and allow them back in. Absolutely. Absolutely. And one of the things that I've just come to terms with, if the world is against you, you're probably doing something right. So every time that well, these, well, these people... He said, if you were of the world, the world would love you as their own. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right? If you're of the world, the world loves you. Just like when I was of the world, the world loved me. Nobody accused me of being a bad guy. But now that I'm not of the world, they accuse me of being of the world. Why? Again, John, this is exactly what I was just saying. They need me to not be the light. As long as I am the light, they are darkness. And I am the reflection in the mirror of what they are not. All I do is expose them. You cannot, John, you cannot show the brightness of your candle by putting out the candle of somebody else. It will never increase the light of your candle. No matter how many other candles you put out, your candle will never be brighter. But if you don't have any light in your candle... When people get irritated and they think that, oh, I have light in my candle and nobody's listening to them. And then their ego is damaged and they're inflated and they're super inflated and think they're the two witnesses and things like that. Right. <clears throat> Those that exalt themselves will be humbled. Um, 350 subscribers, 315 of which are probably my subscribers. That's called being humbled. There is no light in your words because you're still living in ego and have exalted yourself. And until you get past that, Nobody will see your light and you cannot increase the intensity of your light by decreasing mine. Because first of all, I'm going to tell you right now, you will never, ever put this candle out. Copy that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, man. Uh, I, dude, I, I just I thank you so much for coming on, Derek. I, I know that probably everybody on my channel, if I look at the analytics, I swear we are the the, the number one related channel to me is you and uh, all my taglines. Global Witness sends almost everybody here. But if they're not subscribed to you, then they should be. But I'm assuming they are. So, uh, I yeah. And let me just say, show. John, before before we close out this show, I want to say this to everybody out there. John is genuinely a really good guy that genuinely does research, that's genuinely trying to put together very good content to help keep you informed about what's taking place. Um, he's trying to, to help all of those people in different areas of this. So please, when people like John and myself, when this is all we do, okay, this becomes your job 24 seven. I mean, I am literally answering emails or texts or doing something with studying something so I can bring it to you every single hour of every single day. So please, everybody, Absolutely. please support John. Go to his PayPal. This is his only source of income. 
right? I, I'm <laughs> helping his channel. I've tried to help him, uh, you know, pumping up the numbers to get it up to 9,000. I'm working with him behind the scenes, try to get that up so he can at least make a living and feed himself and his children. And we're talking basic needs. Nobody's getting rich on this stuff. Trust me. Even a channel that has, even a channel, if I were to monetize my channel right now, okay, I got 53,000 subscribers. If I were to monetize my channel right now, the most my channel would make from an ad revenue standpoint is probably about 2,500 bucks a month. I don't monetize yep. the channel. I don't make money on it. But if John could make two grand a month on the channel and, and from support from you guys, well, at least he can feed himself and he can continue to do what he does. So please just go to his PayPal and support John. Even if it's five bucks a month or 10 bucks a month, whatever you can do, support John. I promise you, I've watched how he handles himself. I've spoken to John in the background of the conversations. I know how he conducts himself. He's a good dude. He's not screwing anybody over. He's not getting wealthy on this. He's literally just trying to feed his children. And Derek has been such a help for me, man. You've helped me grow so much. Just, you know, mentoring me as far as just different truths. And um, this channel wouldn't be nothing without you. So I, I always say that to you personally, but I'll, I'll say that on air. I don't give a shit. <laughs> so uh, I, I really appreciate you, bro. I really do, man. So. I well, I appreciate you, you, John. I love you. I love you much. And uh, to all of your subscribers, like I said, support John. He's a very, very good man. And and uh, and if I have the ability, I do. I, I support John just like I'm asking you to do. So don't think that I don't. Absolutely. You do. Absolutely. Derek is awesome. He's the best. So I just love you, bro. For real. I love you and too, man. Thank you. Well, thanks for having me on. I appreciate you. All right. I appreciate Appreciate you too, man. I love you. And uh, the link is in the description to the Global Witness channel. I put it at the top. Uh, if you guys want to follow the podcast, it's www.spreaker.com forward slash user forward slash best damn podcast. Um, yeah, email the real best damn podcast at gmail.com. All the links are in the description. I thank you guys. I love you. And I will see you next time. Bye, Derek.